Alrighty, guys, here we go. Round six of Becoming Muhammad Ali. As you probably picked up by now, Cassius was always thought, uh, always thought big, dreamed big, talked big. This one night when we were kids, we sat around his living room with Miss Rudy and Miss Clay and listened to President Eisenhower on the radio. But even when a president was talking, Cassius would never shut up. He was too busy picturing himself in that big white mansion in Washington, D.C. I could be president, he said. I should be president. President Cassius Marcellius Clay Jr., he said. <clears throat> that name would look good on money. Miss Clay just shook her head and tried to shush him, but Cassius would not quit. He's right, Mr. Clay added. He would be the best president ever. Not just the best, the most beautiful one, Cassius said. And I really think he truly believed it. <laughs> I don't know <clears throat> what made him think that in a million years a black man could ever be president. In most places around where we live, black people could hardly even vote. And after a while, Cassius forgot about, ha about being president, but he stayed way too cocky about most other things. Once, for about two weeks, all he talked about was the movie in his head about where he beat, uh, where he beat Rocky, the undefeated heavyweight champion of the world. In his movie, Cassius didn't just beat him. He knocked him out. Cassius was the first man in history to KO the Rock from Brockton in his dreams but sometimes when it was just me and cassius the confidence slipped away a little he would dim and flicker call it nerves worry maybe fear of failing fear of not living up to his own movie i remember when his first big fight was coming up he acted all tough and flashy around most people he bragged to rudy he shadow boxed rings around his daddy he pulled up his sleeves showed off his skinny arms and pumped his biceps for miss clay but sometimes i could tell that he was acting putting on a show not just for them but for himself too i think maybe it was his way of convincing himself of his own greatness i remember cassius showing up for school in the morning with two raw eggs and a quart of milk i watched him break the eggs into the milk shaking it all up and drink the whole mess down in one gulp i'm the baddest dude in louisville he'd shout <clears throat> making sure that everybody could hear him i guess he thought if everybody heard him it kind of made it true Sometimes I saw Cassius get inspired by real movies. Every Saturday he went to the Lyric, the Grand, or the Palace, the theaters down on Walnut Street. He saw every Western movie ever made, every pirate movie, every Tarzan movie. We wondered why the heroes in these movies always seemed white, even in the African jungle. But Cassius still loved seeing the good guy win in the end, because that's how he wanted to see himself, a winner against all odds, no matter what. The truth was, Cassius knew that most of the kids in the gyms were bigger than he was, maybe stronger. He knew there probably wouldn't be any headgear to protect him against these hard jabs and hooks all around Joe Martin's gym. We saw old boxers with nose flattened and mashed turnips, and some of them had their ears all crushed and mangled too. Cauliflower ear, they called it. I don't want to look like a vegetable. Lucky, he <clears throat> said Cassius, I want to stay pretty. And those boxing gloves are so dang heavy. Black leather with everlasting and big letters around the wrist. But Cassius was, when Cassius was starting out, those gloves felt like lead weights on the ends of his skinny arms. Especially after a long training session or sparring match. One night when they were walking home, Cassius told me that he was worried that he wouldn't be able to keep the gloves up in front of his face in a real fight. And if he let them drop in for a second, pow! Turnip. Cauliflower. They should say fear is catching, and I admit that I caught a touch of it. I caught it from Cassius. I think that deep down we both had the exact same fear, that when we finally did get to fight on TV, that he would lose, and that his dream, his personal movie, would end right then and there. Distance. Me, Ronnie, <clears throat> and Lucky go way back like Cadillac seats since grade school but now Lucky goes into fancy Catholic school for smart kids on the other side of town so I only see him on weekends or after school when he comes by the gym to see me sparring. Conversation with Lucky. How you like your school? The food is nasty but it's all right they might skip me a grade. <clears throat> I wish I could skip the rest of them. I think I might go to Bal Bellarmine 
college and study journalism. To the Olympics is where I'm going. I'm too slick for those tricks. Lucky. <clears throat> you gotta get past the Golden Gloves first, GG. To win the Golden Gloves is my goal. After that, it's Olympic gold. Those fists of fury will be my claim to fame. Kings and queens will know my name. Say it loud. What's my name? Cassius Clay. Enough yapping. Oh, hey, Mr. Martin. I'm just funny and do that on your own time. This is my time. Hey, Mr. Martin. Uh, I'll catch up with you later, Gigi. Later, Lucky. Cassius, you got a dream? Yes, sir, Mr. Martin. I want to be a winner. What's the best way to make a dream come true? Only way to make a dream come true is to wake up. You gotta put it to work, Cassius. Joe Martin growls for the hundredth or the thousandth time since the first day I stepped foot in this gym. Cassius, jab, jab, cross, jab, jab, cross. And move your feet, not your mouth so much. I don't know why I can't do both, I say, laughing and jabbing. Road work. Shuffle, backpedal, skip, dash, and roll. That's half my training. Because Joe Martin says boxers got to run so they can't get spent. A fight is not a sprint. It's like a short marathon, Clay. So I run fast and slow, alternating, stimulating the rounds in a ring. And I build up my endurance, keeping my heart healthy. Get my lungs and legs strong enough for the up and the down of each round. After round, after round. Chicksaw Park. Most every day we run before school, take off quietly out the back door at 4.30 a.m., me and Rudy in our training gear, green plastic trash bags draped over us, heavy black pair of trooper boots that Lucky's security guard uncle brought us from Fort Knox, where he works. We cut straight through Greenwood Cemetery, zoom under the parkway through the white neighborhoods that we're supposed to stay out of to get to Chicksaw, where we run the park three times, circling the fishing pond, the cluster of oak trees and three tennis courts that I nicknamed Free Clay. Since they're the only clay courts in Louisville and nobody can and anybody can play there, <clears throat> we race the last block back to our house as the sky dawns, Rudy yawns, hugs Mama, who's on her way to work on the front lawn, and then goes inside to shower. Hey, Burn. I done told you I'm not one of your friends. Sorry, Mama Burn. I say, still um, jogging in place. I swear, you so big, GG, you done outgrown your senses. Conversation with Burton. Anybody crazy enough to be up this early ain't got much sense. Suffer now and live the rest of your life as a champ. How long you gonna keep this, GG? Until I'm a beast in the East and the best in the West. Brr, uh, mama. I'm going to be heavyweight champion of the world, and the first thing I'm going to do is buy a big house up in the highlands, just like the ones you clean for them rich folks every day. Son, don't mind my job. I don't. It's decent work. My mama shouldn't be cleaning toilets and cooking food for nobody. Not for four dollars a day. Not for nothing. I take pride in my work, son, and God bless that four dollars. I bought them trash bags you wasting. I'm not wasting them. It's part of my fighter training. Helps me sweat off the fat, keep my weight right. Plus, I take pride in in being the greatest. Boxing doesn't make you the greatest. Boxing's going to take us away from all of this. We got a nice house, a car, food on the table, family. The Bible says, the Bible don't get me and Rudy into Fontaine Ferry Park. And it show ain't, boy, don't you dare blaspheme me the good book. I'm just saying, I don't need church to tell me what I already know. What you know and what you think you know is two different things. Mama, I know who I am and whose I am. And that grand and <clears throat> that's what Granddaddy Herman told me. God rest his soul. You gonna have me you gonna have me lead work, look after your brother, make sure he's fresh. He likes to run water for thirty seconds and call himself clean. Okay, Mama. And just promise me you're going to read your Bible, go to school, and at least try to not mess up your face doing that boxing. I came in here pretty, and I'm going to leave here pretty. Boy, you sillier than a goose. Sweeter than juice and stronger than Zeus, too. Bye, boy. Hold up, Mama. Been working on a poem for when I win the Olympics. Want to hear it? Hurry up and say it, then, boy, before I miss my bus. My victory speech. The Olympics gave me quite a scare. Fought three rounds with a big old bear. 
came at me all wild and frantic with fists of fury from across the Atlantic. Threw a, few, a big left, then launched a right, exploded on me like dynamite. But Cassius Clay did not retreat. I knocked him into the right side seats. Yeah, I, he was strong, but I was stronger. If you thought he'd win, you couldn't be wronger. Who's the boss that shook up the world? Face so pretty, it's like a pearl. I'm the greatest, you've been told. Now hand me my Olympic gold. Craps. <clears throat> After the last period, me, Ronnie, Rudy... And the big head paw peeps some of the older guys shooting dice behind the school. So I pucker my lips like I'm about to kiss Teeny or something. And I say the word new. Stretching it out. New. So it sounds like a police siren. Which makes them jokers scream so fast they leave all their coins on the ground for us to snatch. We take the free money and then head on over to Rainbow for cheeseburgers. While I make my way to the gym chomping on my last... Uh, uh, on my second onion of the day because my father said that eating them raw makes your bones stronger and keeps you regular. Regimen. Shadow boxing and jogging on Mondays, speed bags on Tuesdays, weightlifting on Wednesdays and Fridays, heavy bag on Thursdays, jumping rope and sparring on Saturdays, ev uh, on Saturdays every week, but Joe Martin doesn't think I'm ready. Still won't let me box a proper fight on tomorrow's champions. Conversation with Joe Martin. When are you going to let me box on TV? When you're ready, kid. It's been almost a year. I'm ready now. How many sit-ups you do today? Four sets, 15. When you do five, five sets of 20 and 100 lunges and you stop playing pranks, that's when. You keep moving the finish line. How am I supposed to cross over? I'm ready. I say when you're ready. Just put me in the ring and I'll show you. I'll win every time. The fight is won before you get in the ring. What's that supposed to mean? It means you gotta work harder and faster with your body and your mind. How am I supposed to get that ready whenever you won't let me even what nobody hit me, Joe Martin? As soon as you learn to keep your fist up and protect your head, can't nobody catch me, so I don't need my fists up. My feet protect me. That's all fine, but some bruiser's going to catch up beside upside the head one day and you won't know what hit you. Not while I'm moving and grooving. I got music in my soul and rhythm in my soul. And by the way, can we get some Chuck Berry or Do Di Bo Diddley on in here? You a dancer or a boxer? Maybe I'm both. Cassius Clay, fist strong as iron, feet fast as a lion. Get back to your training and keep your fists up. So when are you going to let me box on TV? <laughs> the first time Joe Martin let me box, it was one round with Caden Wilkinson, a short 16-year-old from the Highlands who pounded me so hard he bruised my jaw, nearly broke my nose, and wouldn't knock me out and would have knocked me out cold if Joe Martin hadn't put me out first. Set your feet, Cassius. Angle your body, moving. Yeah, I know. Keep my fists up. You know what? Then do it. You. Now, go get some cotton so we can clean that bloody nose. Sunday. I try to sneak out the back door to hit the gym, but Bird catches me. Says, Gigi, I told you no boxing on the Sabbath. Then sends me and Rudy to Aunt uh, Coret, Coretta's house so that she can cut our hair before church. I shadow box all the way to Mount Zion Baptist and then sit in the back of Sunday school telling jokes and showing off my new card trick until the teacher offers $5 to whomever can recite the most Bible verses. Love. It's a tie between Teeny and Ronnie. But he freezes on the last word and can't remember the end of it. And now these three remain. Hope, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is... Tina remembers we all clap for her, and after she get, goes up to get her $5, doesn't even look in my direction, but blows Ronnie a kiss that I hate to admit makes me feel some kind of way. Conversation with Rudy. We're going to be late for dinner. We're going to be late. How long are we supposed to jump rope? Till I say finish, Rudy. I know we're supposed to train hard all the time, but it's Daddy's birthday. No birthdays or holidays for champions. We're not champions yet, though. Yet. Starts in your mind, Rudy. Believe it. Achieve it. Heck. I'm already a champion. Call me king of the swing. How's about we call your brother the loose full lip? Hey, Mr. Martin. Hey there, Rudy. What's funny, my brother the loose full lip? Y'all don't phase me. What about Ronnie O'Keefe? He phase you? Who's Ronnie O'Keefe? 
A tall white boy in the ring over there. Which one, Mr. Martin? The one with the lightning fast jab? Nope. Never heard of him. Doesn't look so fast to me. Well, you'll see for yourself because you're fighting him Saturday night. I am? He is? Yep. Where? On TV. Cassius Clay versus Ronnie O'Keefe. November 12, 1954. We both came out throwing blows every which way. His arms long and bony as uh, tree branches. My feet wild like the wind. I blow by him so fast he couldn't lay more than a few fingers on me. That's all you got, I whisper in his ear when he clenches onto me after a straight right punch that misses my cheek by an inch. The ref separates us and we go back at it, mostly missing each other until the end of the second round and most of the third when I land a series of short pops to his head. One right below his left ear that makes him stumble. In the... Um, into the ropes right in front of where Cash and Rudy and Lucky and my uncles are sitting and screaming, Go! 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 But Ronnie gets saved by the bell, so I have to settle for a split decision and a four dollar prize. In my debut fight, Cassius Clay, one win, zero losses. Promotional tour. To spread the word about my next fight, Cash said he would drive me around Louisville but he didn't come home the night before. And anyway, his truck was sitting on two flats. So I down a quart of milk, two raw eggs, and take off with Rudy and Ronnie to knock on doors and pronounce myself to the world. We walk through Black Parkland uh, laughing and cutting up and telling everybody how I'm going to uh, demolish my next opponent on TV. Introducing me. The name's Cassius Clay. I'm gearing to fight. My next foe may bark, but I'm sure going to bite. If he comes in grinding... Like he's having fun, I'll wipe off that smile and beat him in one. If he tries to stick me like Elmer's glue, I'll turn up the heat and sting him in two. Tell all of your friends, best bet on me, because no, ain't no way he's lasting for three. And that's round six.